welcome to this uh, May Day uh, version of the Development Reboard. Um, call this uh, meeting to order. This is a in-person meeting. We have no remote attendees. Uh, I guess to check the box, Meredith, I'll let you do your do your spiel. Uh, I guess we can do that first. Yeah, it's been so long since I've done a whole meeting. Uh, introducing members starting on my left. Kevin O'Connell, board member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Rob Goodwin, chair. Joe Kiernan, board member. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so now Meredith will talk yep. about our procedures. Yep, and so this is, this is definitely for people who might be watching tonight over Orca Media, streaming this. I'm gonna share my screen for you so that you'll know how to get on tonight's meeting if you so wish. Uh, so, get my little spiel. So for anyone who is viewing tonight's development review board meeting via Orca Media, you can participate in tonight's meeting via the Zoom platform, either with video access options or just over the telephone. Um, you can type this link into your browser and it will bring you into the Zoom platform. And that way you would be able to actually have video over your um, computer or smartphone and be able to see what's going on, see what we do when we share screens, um, as well as be able to ask questions and interact. Alternatively, you can dial in via your phone and plug in this meeting ID when you're prompted and I'll let you into the meeting. Um, and you'll be able to hear everything over your phone as well as ask questions and speak with us. If you try to log into the meeting and you have problems, please email me at mcrandall at montpelier-vt.org. Um, if anyone does decide to get on via Zoom, know that turning your video on is optional. Um, and when you do, um, if you do log in that way, please change your name in Zoom to both your first and last name. That way we will know who has logged in and um, be able to call on you when appropriate. Um, please also make sure to keep your microphone on mute if you log in over Zoom. That way it will reduce background noise. Um, in the event the public is unable to access tonight's meeting, it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. Um, and I will know about that because I will be monitoring my email throughout tonight's meeting. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. All right, thank you, Meredith. And uh, welcome to Catherine Burgess. She's glad to have you. No, we're all right. Uh, do we have a uh, motion for the agenda? Uh, I, I'm. Uh... Submit a motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion by Kevin, second by Joe. Uh, all those in favor of the agenda being approved, say aye. Aye. Agenda is approved. Uh, okay. So uh, first of all, uh, a few comments tonight. Uh, we uh, are sad to see Abby uh, have this as her last meeting. Uh, and uh, we really thank you for your time over the last several years. It's been great. You pinch it a couple times to be the chair, uh, which was awesome. So uh, thank you for that. And I uh, also want to congratulate Kevin on the another 25 year term on the <laughs> DRB. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank, no, thank you, Kevin. It's been great having you and uh, so glad that you are willing to continue oh, to, to, all mine. to be a part of this. <laughs> uh so uh that's that's that um we have three applications uh this evening um uh, five to seven vime street is one of them um and um uh, 2481 Mel elm street is the second and then uh, bailey ave is the third um feel free once you're done with your application you don't have to stick around for the entire meeting feel free to to go our last one is actually uh applicant is here on the board and we do a musical chairs, so uh, don't feel like you have to stick through the to the end of the meeting. Um, we looks like we move the approval of the minutes to the end. Um, we did. I know we haven't changed the which is fine. We haven't changed the procedures, rules of procedures yet. But Audra put it there, and I just left it. <laughs> which is fine. I like it. I like that. Um, so the first application five to seven Vine Street, just to give you guys a 
preview of sort of how this process works. If you haven't been here before, um, we will swear everyone in. Uh, it's going to sketch plan. Oh, a sketch plan. To, we don't sketch plan. Sketch right. Plan. We don't have to do that until you get to Joe. That's right. I, this tricks me up. It always tricks me up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, that being said, we'll skip that. Uh, <laughs> if you want to come up uh, to the microphone and introduce yourself. Yeah, just Sean. make sure you're seated and gotcha. be, just make sure you're into the microphone so the recording secretary can hear you. Yeah, because this will be the, the video that ends up getting posted on the website for people to be able to view. Gotcha. My name is John Miller and, and Maureen Miller. Wonderful. Um, okay, and so you are both here for the uh, Vine Street uh, application. Is that yes. correct? Yeah, great. So Meredith, want to give a brief technical overview uh, and then we can turn over to y'all for a summary from your perspective. Um, so this is a sketch plan subdivision. Um, so as the board's pretty familiar with, you don't actually make any decisions tonight, but this is an opportunity to give the applicants feedback on any questions you may have, things you might see as missing or needing some elaboration in the application before they come back for the final application for subdivision. Um, this particular parcel is a, it's a already developed parcel that already has two um, homes on it. They're separate, separate buildings and there's a shared driveway. Um, and so the proposal is to subdivide this into two different parcels, um, continue with a shared driveway with the driveway being on one parcel. Um, and there's there's not a lot of complications to it. There's a little bit of the, the twist and that there's no proposal to add that a second driveway. And so for the final application, um, there will need to be some information about, um, you know, like a shared parking plan or agreement, um, as well as what we've done previously in other applications where we want to see a copy of a deed or something else to show that the um, person who doesn't actually own the driveway has rights to use it um, and clarity on, on those types of situations. But otherwise, the... Um, I don't see any red flags with the application. All right, thank you, Meredith. Um, I guess I just wanna maybe provide a little summary summary of your project to get the board up to speed on uh, what you're proposing. Sure. And We've owned this property for 35 years and two houses have been rentals all of that time. Um, we can't really do it anymore. Uh, it's a little too taxing. We're getting on in years and we're ready to move on. And it's a, cumbersome property because there aren't too many left in Montpelier that are single fat two single family homes on a single plot of land we actually bought it from the uh the butlers charles butlers and and all and they actually had the family in both houses um which was <laughs> which was pretty unique as well but again that was a long time ago um we're just we were just excited to see that the uh, zoning had changed um in such a manner that is, is is ideal for kind of getting rid of these anomaly land uses that, that just really, like in the meadow, everybody is, you know, there's, there's a lot of condominiums, but they're almost always in the same building, sharing a wall. Uh, I don't know of too many other properties that still exist. I know, I know of a few, but not in the meadow anyway. And the meadow is, is getting much tighter packed uh, there's a lot of, uh, seems to be a lot of activity in increasing the the amount of units in certain buildings and so forth. And this is a great opportunity to to break these two apart. And the the shared driveway situation has been working flawlessly for all of this time because it's a nice big wide driveway. It's flat, it's straight, it's short. And it's got plenty of room on one side for parking. So um, that's all been kind of figured out. And um, the, the utilities run under the driveway to the back house, which is as it should be. The front house has its own sewer and water system that runs nowhere near the driveway. So really, the houses are, are completely separate. The other thing that's of interest is the, um, the back house, which is number five has a large backyard, which was always 
kind of shared by the two houses. But I need to say that it was a rare day when anybody from the front house ever went into that backyard because it was the backyard that the kitchen window and the and so forth of the back house looked out on. So they've always really owned it in, in reality. Um, and the subdivision seems to take care of that perfectly. It just seems like it's exactly why the zoning was changed. And I don't know what, what else can I tell you? I do, there was the discussion of the sharing the driveway is interesting. Um, should I just pass these yeah. out or? Yeah. yeah. Um, you can just give them on one end and we'll pass them down. Um, I don't know if there's enough, but there's some. I think there's five or five of them. Yeah. Um, I can get one later. But um, we got Jim Palmazano to try to clarify the the message that the that the the two houses, when they're separated, will share all the maintenance of the of the driveway and any repairs and plowing and so forth. Again, it's really small. We don't plow. Uh, somebody with a snowblower takes care of it. It's worked all this time and it's not disruptive. So I'm sure that that's how it would continue. And uh, he, he wrote it up pretty nice so that the it's an easement for the um, for the front house or the number seven Vine Street to use the driveway and the parking spaces. And he's even indicated on a site plan or um, that's that's a separate element, but indicated where the parking spaces would be located. And actually, they're they're kind of automatic because there's a little bump out there with a with an azalea plant or a no, fire bush, and a little bit of uh, of rock work around it that actually defines those defines those parking places. Go ahead, Kevin. Yeah. So, uh, is there one water connection for both houses? And that that. So the, the, they have their own separate attachment to city water. Yes, they're and, and under, sewer as well. They run under their own properties yeah. in the subdivision. John, you said you had brought the site plan that I have electronically. Yes. Right. Do you want to pass that around? Because this, so the the sketch plan that you have right now doesn't have where the water lines yeah. run and everything. That's and that was one of the things I called out in my staff report. And they actually have an updated one now. And I, okay. I, can, also, I can also share screens so you guys can see on a yeah. big yeah. screen. I mean, yeah. I just I just remember yeah. some of the older houses in, in the old oh, neighborhood oh, yeah. we're still would, dealing with would have one water connection for you know yeah. five or six houses. Oh yeah. No, we're still uh, Department of Public Works is still dealing with those. So yeah. this shows where the water line, there's a water line here. Straight up. Water yeah. line here. You have two um, and this is showing, so this will be a version of a new site plan that will come in with the final application. Um, so there's designated parking spots here. What about the sewer? We have that. Um, we don't know yet. Yeah, I don't see the sewer on here. I just see the water. Correct. But I'm assuming the sewer runs nearby. We, but yeah, this this could be something that's just cleaned up before the yeah. final application. sewer runs right across the front yard of the front house. Okay. Right to the street. And the back house, it travels the entire length of the drive. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we've got, yeah, because we have the electric and we have water, but just for the final application, I don't see sewer on here. Um, so. Who would have that? Department of Public Works. Oh, okay. Potentially. Um, yeah, I think the biggest concern is to make sure that 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 you don't need any easement or access to maintain yeah. that yeah. place. No, yeah. yeah, I think attesting that the, that's where they run um, as well as, you know, Department of Public Works for the final will confirm that there's separate hookups, um, separate, separate billing. Oh, yeah. Um, the owner of the driveway is the house in the rear. And so the house on the left there, seven, I guess, is going to have an easement for the driveway. Right. But the person who owns the driveway will also have their utilities under that driveway. Yes. Okay. Did you get a chance to review the staff report? I did. Yes. All right. So are there any any questions and issues in there about moving forward or whatnot? Didn't seem to be anything. Okay. I mean, uh, there was the issue of the language. Yeah. Yeah. Which we've been working on just to make yeah, sure yeah. That, that that's going to be easily understood. And that there was some question about a nearby fire hydrant, which in all this time, I got to claim complete ignorance as to where where there's a fire hydrant on Vine Street. 
well, I'll be able to help you find that. Yeah. I'll be able to help okay. you find that. You're going to come mapping. over and we'll walk around the neighborhood. No, I've got, I've got them all on my, my mapping software in the office. I honestly have never seen one near there. <laughs> there might be one near Meadow Mars. I bet, I bet, I bet we can find it and, and it'll, it'll work out. Well, you and I'll have a meeting this week. Great. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. I mean, a lot of these issues, it's like, you know, it's like this part of the process where it's like, we don't need to run through and like address them and just to make sure that any big issues that look like they needed addressing, yeah. you know, it was, um, it seemed like there were a few details that were like something about 20 years. And, but, but I believe that, that Jim wrote it as for, forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that would be a problem. So you mentioned that the, the there's a rear yard here for the five fine street. Yeah. Parcel. Yes. And so it looks like it's shown on here as like a separate lot almost. No. I those are setbacks. Yeah. There's this, a, this setback is this, this, these are the setbacks. This little line, I think, is because that maybe used to be a separate parcel at one point and got merged. Right. So that little line, I not quite is it on the key? The line yeah, so there's a there's a right of way here, I think, for maybe utilities or something. Okay. But it's not it's not a parcel line. The the bold lines are the parcel lines. Does that make sense? I, I mean, it just it looks like an interior lot line, uh, you know, to <clears> me. <throat> and uh, I don't know. I think it would make sense to call it out to just say that there's not two lots there. It just it's got a book yeah. and page called out on the plat as separate than the um the five vine street wait wait, wait, wait. That's... uh right so oh wait because you're looking at that yeah, right not the um now i see what you're talking about <laughs> okay i think because it was a yeah I, it's it, it could very well be another parcel line i i think it's just we'll, we'll, well clear it up with richard reported separately if yeah, the original sense. owners that makes sense i think it it would just so there's only been two owners in all these years. Right. Butlers have been pretty for what? Hundred years. Hundred years. So what do you I, want it to look? I mean, I like? think I think it would just be make sense that like the to just clarify that that line is going to go away if it exists. So Richard Bell could tell you exactly what it is. Exactly. Uh, so I, I think that you know you wouldn't want someone coming in and uh, you know ten years being like we actually have uh, three lots here and not you know and not <laughs> two. Uh, but um, I don't think not an issue. <laughs> I'm sure we can. it looks like he used the same designation to use for setbacks. Yeah. Um, no, it's it's well, so there's well, so there's the um, setbacks, right? Because right? because because it's also Rob's looking at the draft flat that you submitted yeah. versus what I have up on the screen right now is the site plan, right? So the right. site plan shows the setbacks. Um, but this line here. Oh, see so where my hand is like on this. there? Yes. That's the one that's a little funky because it's got this double dashes that's very much like the bold property boundaries here. Also, right away, the person line. So it's in the yeah. And yeah. let's say, right, I think because he's not, it, it may be because it's not 100% clear Probably. Um, on the deeds what, what happened there. Um, yeah, I, I would just, I think that it would be, that's your bell would know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sure. just, he understands, I'm sure. So yeah. All right. That's really all I had for questions on this. Like, yeah, there's some issues to address, but it seems like you're working very well with Meredith and whatnot to, you know, address them. And that's what this process is for to do a weather report. So any anyone else have any? I'm pretty satisfied. I mean, to me, the, the, the issue was utilities and yeah. so forth, and you've answered that. Is there anything else you would want to hear from us? No, I think you've done a great job and uh, gotten your T's and crossing your I's, and you're on the right track. So, anyone else? Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thanks. I'll work with you guys and feel free to. Uh, <laughs> Shoot me an email tomorrow with when you are want to try and meet um, over the next couple of days. Right. I won't be in the office on Friday, but I'll be in the office the next right. week. You've been great. Yes. Thank you. We appreciate it.
And can I get one copy at least of my? Oh. Um, no, I don't need no, no, just the big site plan. Oh, oh big site yeah. plan. Yeah, take that with you. Yeah. You want that? Okay. That's probably in the process of changing anyway. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome so much. Got tired of climbing up on the roof and cleaning the gutters. Oh. <laughs> I have. We're yeah, with our producers, there's a couple of really huge pine trees. They're beautiful. Yeah. But the entire, every porch roof is like got six inches of pine needles. Yeah. And every about, summer, yeah, I know. And like, you know, who has to do that? And they're done that. We have to do it all. I'm, I'm, you, yeah. you couldn't rent them at a reasonable price, which is us. Yeah. Always, always below market, reasonable. And we make friends and with the people that live there and we have to do all the work ourselves. Yeah. If we had hired that work, then they would be paying <laughs> yeah. a couple thousand dollars a month or whatever people pay today. And we've just always gotten to know our tenants and really care about them. So we are done though. <laughs> <laughs> if we have some luck, right? Yeah, yes. good luck. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so the next application is um, our um, 2481 Elm Street. Uh, Chris and Mark, is it? Paul. Chris and Paul. Yeah. Dazzling dude. <laughs> I'm, I'm Chris Hammer, and i the one who filled out the application. Paul was like out of the country somewhere. But I'm really just being support for Paul, so he's the guy who initiated the project. And I'm Paul Markowitz, resident of Montpelier. Wonderful. Um, all righty, thank you. So, um, Meredith, you want to get us started here? Or, yeah. Uh, Can switch. you a second? Just making a couple notes. Uh, so, uh, this is another sketch plan subdivision. I'm dividing one parcel into two. Um, and the fun little twist on this one um, is that the smaller parcel being created um, is actually currently developed. It's developed with a community garden. And that's one of the few things that could actually be on that land because um, pretty much the whole section of land, this end of the existing bigger parcel is within the floodplain. A large part of it is also within the river corridor, which is an area of land that needs to be kept free of really any big structures because it's an area where under our um, river hazard area regulations, we want the river to be able to move should it need to because um, natural rivers move and shift their banks. Um, and so there is very, very little that could be built on this piece of land, but agriculture is an allowable use. So um, this is actually one of, one of the things that could happen and have this be subdivided and still be used. So um, it's a, a nice little combination of circumstances. Um, the remainder of the parcel is going to remain as is. There weren't really any big red flags on that one. Um, you've seen the staff report. So yeah, time for questions and feedback. Perfect. You guys want to give a little update on where you've been, where you're going? Closer to the microphone, Paul, because you're, yeah. you're, I'm sorry. Well, I, I'm the I thought I'd just give a little background on how we got to this point. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So the land was owned by uh, Donnie Goat, who had been in his family maybe 40 years or so. And Donnie had a serious illness. He passed actually about two months ago or so. Mm. And he was sick for a while, quite a while, and he had deeded the land and give the power of attorney to um, you know three three people um, uh, whose name Tina Gallison is the principal person in that. Um, anyhow, they had made it clear that when Donnie died, and this we've known he was impending that he was going to be dying, uh, he was in hospice. Uh, that the land was going to be sold. Uh, they were going to sell the land, and we realized that it was an opportunity that if the land was like, it had been a community garden for about 35 years and that the land was sold, there was gonna be no guarantee that the property would be able to be remain as a community garden. 
So I approached the um, Tina, and on her behalf, she reached out to Donnie Gove. I had actually suggested something like a conservation easement, and they got back to me and basically said that he wanted to donate the land to the city. Um, I was uh, pleasantly surprised and happy to hear that. Um, and so uh, back in the fall, we applied for and got a grant from the Conservation Commission uh, to cover basically the cost of doing the survey for the, uh, to set the boundary for the lot, as well as any legal costs uh, associated with, with the transfer. Um, we have made it clear to uh, Tina Gallison that, you know, she doesn't have to do, there's no expense to her, no, no effort for her, we'll do all the work associated with that. Um, it turns out that to get the minimum two acre lot side that it almost perfectly coincides with the existing parcel where the community garden is, the boundary you know, the buffer is, is great. So it goes basically straight shot from the road to the river and covers the two acres of the community garden. Um, you know, what else we're actually really excited about the idea that I was telling somebody today, it feels like we're going from being a renter to an owner, yeah, to be a member of the city. Uh, I don't know, so that's kind of the background. We're really excited, community gardeners. We have about uh, 20 some odd gardeners there, about 30 plots or so. The overall parcel is about two acres, maybe about an acre of it is actually in and garden, uh, river bottom, really fertile land. So it's very yes. Oh, and the agreement with the landowner, current landowner, is they wanted to see the garden, the land continue as a community garden. So we've actually put together a draft deed, said that the land is going to be restricted to mm. agricultural purposes and as a community garden. Um, that was their primary interest. Um, she has expressed to me that uh, her interest is in carrying out the wishes of her friend Donnie, who passed away, to make sure this land continues as a community garden that his father's uh, uh, offered to the gardeners there, you know, 35 years ago or so. I don't know. So the, there are no structures at all on the land? There is. I mean, like, other than a. There's like a little shed, shed or something. Shed, yeah, but, the, but, but nothing more substantive than, no. than that. So, um, excuse me for actually asking a question that might be obvious, but so why does it need to be a subdivision? Well, the owners are going to sell the property. They're going to sell the entire parcel. Right. That's a name. So we're, we're talking about peeling off two acres. Oh, from the total. Of the total. Okay. So what what is the size of the total? Oh, 13.2. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. My, yeah, that's what uh, I was looking for. That's fine. Yeah, and just to be clear that the land, once we go through all this, that the land would be owned by the city. And so we've been in conversations right. with the city about, you know, what would this, what do we need to do to make sure they're comfortable with that, you know, from our side, the gardener's side, to make that happen. Right. That's that so, is the plan. So, yes, I know that garden has been there forever, pretty much. Um, what what is the water source? Uh, it's the is North it Branch. From the, huh? Excuse me. The North Branch. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, we don't have any. Uh, that's a potential future uh, upgrade, but basically, but right, you want yeah. water, you you haul it from the rivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's also rain too. <laughs> that's always a good thing. We're a big fan, which we have plenty of right now. We're yeah. doing really good for rain the next three days. Yeah. So the um, yeah, the the fact about the deed restricting the use of it, um, I think, is kind of important here. Oh, helpful, I guess, uh, here. You know, just because we're approving this subdivision, creating a line in perpetuity, someone comes along and is like, "Well, no, I want to build a house," but like, well, can it's in a floodplain? Yeah. We can. <laughs> we would think about ways to you know, communicate that during this process that like, well, yeah, like you look at this map and 75, 80% of this is not buildable. Um, I guess my question is, I don't know the answer to it, is whether we require at least some version of the river corridor in the floodplain depicted on the plat to sort of, you know, not just parcel yeah. one, maybe that's a comment you made, but 
Oh, I can't remember if I put that in here or not. Um, but I think that even if it's not on the plat, mm -hmm. you could require that on a site plan. We can easily add that. Yeah, to show where the um, river corridor and then the floodplain limits are. Yep. I think that would be definitely doable. By the way, we have uh, shared a draft copy of the deed with the city's attorney, and he's signed off on it, or not officially, but basically he's in those goods. Awesome. Yeah, so that, that could also be something if you want to see that and have that be part of the file. Um, yeah, I mean, I, just so you can see the language, and then it's. I don't know that. Yeah, that that could, that could, could be, be an attestation. Be yeah, uh, I mean, I think just like a brief note on the plat, you know, if you you know, have that executed or know that prior to the end, just like noting it that, you know, there's this deed that explains the rights for, you know, this parcel as you guys are acquiring it, mm -hmm. um, you know, could be helpful for a number of reasons going into the future. Uh, if that makes sense. So like when, so, so, the we... deed, so that you're going to exchange deeds, you know, to get this, you know, property, right. Um, and there's going to be some language for the city that this is going to be you know, a parcel specifically for a community garden, somehow noting that condition on the survey, because um, the survey also gets recorded, could be helpful in the future for, you know, someone just being reminded that <laughs> there's only one thing you can do with this, you know, with, with this land. So the, so when, for the subdivision process, right, um, a lot of times you can have a subdivision and somebody will subdivide the land and record that final plat in the city land records before it's actually transferred, right? Before you do the exchanging of deeds and all of that. Sometimes you do it all together. So that would let you, if you ended up were able to synchronize it so that when you recorded the final plat that says, yes, this is its own piece of land. If you sequence that so that on the same day, everybody was also signing and recording the deeds. And that's just possible because you have to sign off on the yeah. plat. Right. Um, but if you can do that in that way, the plat will have a deed reference on it, or at least a note that says, you know, at the same time, a deed with use restrictions, and you can put the name of it was recorded in the land records. And that's a note, a new note on this plat so that somebody who only sees the plat still sees where the new deed is right because right now this plat is only referencing prior deeds has notes on it as to where other lines came from where other information came from um sounds yeah, easy, easy really. and i think yeah. the, the surveyor i think intended to record the plat after i mean it could be simultaneous but i'm assuming that she'll be able to reference a new deed well because you can't you can't create the parcel and transfer the land until the survey is yeah. done. And I, I mean, I don't need okay. to call out the exact open page. You can like put a note on the plot that says like lot one to be conserved for whatever language is in that deed. Yeah. Community garden. Like that is a, enough of a notice that says, oh, okay. Like, I better go look for that deed. Yeah. Um, so the time the city council has to obviously approve the deed. So you're saying after that happens, when the signing of the deed happens then then it's we'll we'll, we'll how, about, how about how about we talk so that we can go through everything that we want to put in the final application okay yeah um and how because i i am not up to speed on everything you have done with the city for the transfer so we'll work out the details okay. but i think i think what rob just said about having a note yeah. in here that says this land you know which, which is it proposed lot one shall be conserved via deed restrictions for, and then whatever language you've got in the language that you're running through for the deed. Um, and that can be something also that, you know, the, the city attorney can probably take a look at to make sure it's just consistent with the way they want it referenced. That should be pretty easy to add. Yeah, okay. it's, it'll be an easy, it'll be an easy note to add. Um, and that's just, it's like Rob said, it's a little red flag for whoever looks at the plat that goes, ooh, I better go find that deed right now. <laughs> Um, you know, the community garden has been in existence for a long time. Hopefully it will continue to be in existence for a long time, but you never know what happens. Yeah. I mean, those two things that the river corridor flood limits, nothing that has to be like surveyed, certified, you know, by a 
you know, <laughs> elevation certificate or anything like that. You don't need to go down that road, but just like, you know, plotting what information the city has to give context to, you know, what the parcels look like. So and your preference would be to have that on the plat itself? Oh, uh, it doesn't need to be on the plat. I mean, a site plan. Site plan. You know, we can, we can have a site plan. Yeah. yeah. Use, use this basic information, but make it a site plan and throw the. Yeah. No, it's all, it's all digital data, so you can yeah. easily add it to them. Yep, and that's, I mean, the state's updating their maps by the end of the summer. So having that on the site plan makes more sense than putting on something recorded because mm -hmm. those lines can change. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions here? No? I have a question. Yeah. There was a note in your comments, Meredith, about um, impervious surfaces. On and the what, other parcel, yeah. Yeah, and what... What is it that you actually need from us related to that? Um, so a general statement in the final application, right? And it doesn't have to be exact because we know it it meets the the requirement um, as to you know an estimate of how many square feet of impervious surface are left on that parcel. So it's the you know, like the footprint of the buildings and the um, graveled driveways. We can we can calculate that on Google. Just yeah, yeah. 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 So it was one of those things where I, I was able to do an estimate quickly on my stuff, but I was like, I'm not going to try and actually <laughs> get it exact. And it's you know, it's clearly going to be um, less than the max allowed, but it's just getting that. As much as possible in those final applications, we want the data to be coming from you versus my filling it mm -hmm. in. No, we can do that. Anything else? Any other questions? This is like mom and apple pie, right? <laughs> this is pretty this awesome. Is great. Doesn't get better than this, right? Yeah. I mean, one thing I could add, I, there was an issue that came up. It's actually Tina brought it up. Because she's dealing with a subdivision in Williston, mm -hmm. where it's a much smaller parcel, and they're having to get a state septic permit. Uh, mm -hmm. And so she she brought that up to me, and I was like, "That's going to be a drag." So I contacted a engineer in Waterbury and said, "I need an estimate because I have to tell Paul you got to raise more money." And they came back to us and said, "Because of the configuration of the lot, and actually I was able to, he sent me the reference in the in the state rules." that because the existing septic system is more than 500 feet away from the lot, what they're worried about is that you're taking off two acres. Maybe that's the place for the replacement septic. Mm -hmm. Clearly it's not it's floodplain. You couldn't put a replacement yeah. field there, no. but there's plenty of room on the existing lot yeah. to have a replacement. Because initially, if you don't have that distance, you got to actually design a replacement field if there hasn't been one already identified. And that would have to happen before we could get, because we need to get a state subdivision permit as well. Yeah. Sounds like we don't need to do that. So it's just a big relief. If you have something in writing from the state versus just the email you sent to Paul, maybe put that, whatever you got in writing from the state in the final application. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get a confirmation of that from the state engineer. Awesome. And well, I haven't, you know, I've given phone messages yeah, it's just, it's back and forth. It's the but. state. It takes a while sometimes. Your proposed language too about it only being a community garden is helpful. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you can include that. Right. Yeah, uh, I really need a septic system for a community garden. <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually, I mean, we're, we require them to go through that process too somewhere in our regs. No. Uh, it's so because of what the use is, DBW isn't going to make right. them. I and mean, we need, we need something from clarifying that they're not going to need those state permits. Right. Um, because they, I mean, they're out past city water and sewer. And so just confirmation that they don't need that because right. you know, otherwise they would need to show that they can comply. Yeah. Yep. So, yep. You were right on the right track with that one. Good. You guys, you guys got to it before, before I got to it in my staff report. So it was nice. I'd seen the, the email, but, um, we yeah. definitely need the, something from the state. Yeah, shouldn't be an issue. Worked, I worked at a firm where we're into this all the time, and it should be a five sentence uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I, disclaimer. I, so, <laughs> and the rules are pretty clear, yeah. but we probably should have a 
state employee confirm that our interpretation of the rules yeah. are correct. <laughs> if you can, that's a really good thing yeah. to do. Yeah. So just in terms of timing for the phase two here on our application. So we're gonna read work. This is my first time through this talking about it. So we're gonna resubmit with the information you've asked here that we're gonna submit the final application here. Mm -hmm. right. So when once we do that, when can we get on the before the DRB again? So um it would be good if we had an email exchange about this tomorrow so that I can actually look back at my calendars. Um, I believe we're taking applications right now for June 5th hearings. Um, and because you don't need to go to design room, Email me tomorrow because I have to look at my list. It's a complicated okay. list because May has an extra week in it. Um, so it could be the deadlines this Friday. It could be next Friday. But e e call or email me tomorrow when I can look at the okay. calendar on my wall. We'll do. Um, and that would get you on June 5th. That's the next available date. June 5th. June 5th would be the hearing date. Um, and then the actual permit can't get issued until there's a written decision. And that just takes some time. Um, and then there's get to 30, it as fast as we can. And there's a 30 day appeal period after the permit. There's a 30 day appeal period after the the written decision is issued. That starts when it's signed by the chair or whoever chairs. <laughs> it's not always Rob. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank and you. I know you guys were trying to do this a lot sooner. It's just we we hit the hit the hurdles of. We have What's an agreement required? to use the garden from the current owners. You do. In fall, yeah. Starting so today. Good. What? Starting today. Starting today. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. Right. So we have to wait until the middle of July or August. <laughs> no it's pressure to move this thing a little bit off, but but um, we want to keep it moving. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. thank you. And by the way, Meredith's been way helpful. So thank you. We know. Good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night, all. See you. Yep. Good night. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good one. Oh, what okay. was that last group? Yes. The bridge. I'm not good. That needs to be. Have you done one term regarding um okay it's not like a while. Oh so yeah. there's a use restriction to floodplain and river quarter yeah, on the terms. site plan. That's, we need to make sure the property thanks for your service. Yeah, I mean we're to suck it out. Just state that we yeah. yeah. it's in my it's in my yeah. staff yeah. report, but just condition that with the uh, like waiver of development rights, right? That's that's oh there's that but they're also so I think that's fine. The point they were trying to make was that the parcel that has the house and business that has a septic, yeah. they had they also have to have something from the state clarifying that removal of the claim is it gonna right. hurt the so it's sort of a double because we have to look at both parcels. Right, make sure right, that right. they're yeah, going to yeah, damage yeah. the other person. Yeah, carving off the sheet, stuff in the floodplain. So <laughs> I know exactly. Cool. Yeah, hey, uh, they made us. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I had to print. I had to print emails and go report them to the town clerk. Emails from the like state for that like waiver. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, that's basically what we're going to make them do. And yeah, make a exactly. File. Yeah. Um, you ready, Joe? Yeah. First, I'm going to refuse myself. Oh. <laughs> Excellent choice. Perfect. All right. Take a second. I'll just go up there. <laughs> and that's logged into Zoom. So are you logged in so you can share some screens or something, too? I'm not logged in. Yeah, that's already all logged in. As long as you don't have to share anything, then I wouldn't worry about it. That's... Recusal acknowledged. Ooh. So yeah, don't little difference. Don't problem. even touch anything. Just worry about the microphone. All right. Uh, 
So we do have to uh, swear you in. Yeah, this is the real deal. Uh, so I do. Would you raise your right hand to be sworn in as witness? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Great. Um, I could switch this around. You want to go first and do your presentation, then Meredith can chime in. Uh, sure, I can just give a quick overview of the project um, and some of the complications with it. Um, so I live at 17 Bailey Avenue, a uh, single family home. We share a driveway with the neighbor, actually a very similar situation as to what was just before the board um, with an easement to use our driveway. Uh, so my house is very, very close to the property line because it's right on that driveway, basically. And that's the first issue is the setback issue. But into the project, uh, there is a the house is basically a two story box with four rooms in each box or each floor. And then off the back is like a porch. It's called a solarium in the official National Historic Register. Uh, but. It's two stories, and the bottom almost certainly used to be open, but it's been since glassed in. And the upper story is also glassed in. It's like a sleeping porch off one of the, the bedrooms. Um, there's no foundation under it. It's just a porch with some glass on it. So it's not even Vermont really a three-season space, more of like a two-season space. And then it's really not that pleasant in the summer either because all that glass acts like a greenhouse, and it gets pretty hot in there. And uh, the house doesn't have air conditioning or anything, so it's just hot. Um, being totally uninsulated is just not terribly useful. Uh, it's being used mostly for storage, things like that. But you leave your shoes out there in the winter, and then you come out and they're, you know, blocks of ice or jackets or anything. Everything's as cold as it is outside, just doesn't get snow on it. Um, so the plan is to remove it entirely and rebuild it much in the same footprint. However, it will be two feet wider, two feet towards the back. Um, so no closer to either of the properties, any of the side, but it will go back towards the house, towards the back of the property line. Two feet, um, there'll be a foundation, insulation, it'll be a real part of the house. Um, and the, uh, another major difference is right now, there's a flat roof on top of it, much like a porch. It'll become a peaked roof. Uh, the flat roof is starting to, it just directs water kind of back at the house, especially on the corners and is uh, rotting away my eaves there. Um, so that's gonna have to get dealt with one way or another, whether the project got done or not. Um, with a peaked roof and a gutter system, shouldn't be a problem anymore. Um, yeah, other than that, uh, one of the major issues with the project is that the building is in the national a contributing structure of the National Historic Register. It's in the uh, application. Um, so I did have to get approval from the DRC, which mm -hmm. I've gotten. Um, I went before the Historic Preservation Committee. They gave me some pointers on what they would like to see. Uh, so, and honestly, they didn't have much. Um, just a couple details about the eave or the, what did you call it? The cornice at the top of the addition. And uh, there's an ice pass through that still exists, and we're going to try and save the front of this ice pass through. It can't be functional anymore the way that the configuration of the new addition is going to be because of this little porch that's going to be kind of where it is now. Um, but on the inside, it will still remain the same. Um, we're not really changing anything on the inside of the house, except that the current entryway from the back porch is going to become a pantry and current bathroom is gonna become an entryway. Um, yeah, uh, in the addition, we're gonna add a bathroom on both floors. So that will kind of bump up the number of bathrooms in the house. Right now there's a single bathroom upstairs for the four bedrooms. Now there'll be two, which would be a significant change, especially for my wife and I. Um, and yeah, downstairs would be a mudroom and then we're relocating the bathroom. And that's about it. Joe, when was the original house built? 1918, I believe. Same year the Red Sox won the World Series. And uh, we believe everything was original to the house except for the glass mm -hmm. on this first story. So 
this is, seems to be like very two separate like application criteria. One is demolition harsh of a portion of a historic structure, and the other is a setback waiver. Yep. There's it's the just two, there's as, the two different reasons they're here. That's just be organized and treat this as two applications uh, in, a, in a sense. And okay. maybe we just go over the setback criteria first. Yeah. Uh, and then we can tackle the other one. So the um, the new quote unquote new zoning reg mm -hmm. uh, require that we grant a waiver. Wait. So this is a it doesn't require that you grant a waiver, but it gives you the option to grant a waiver if the criteria are met. It's a because what what's being requested for getting closer to the property line mm -hmm. is within a range that's that the board is allowed to grant a waiver it doesn't have to go to a variant stage or something more more a higher tier what's right? what, what's the uh, cutoff for that for having to go to uh if, a if the request was to have the building mm -hmm. closer than five feet to the property line you would have to go to a variance and at that point it has to be that there's really no other way for you to use the property um okay and we're not there okay which is great we're in the waiver waiver role which is there's just the two criteria chunks um criteria four um from figure 402 so this is on page five of the staff report and that actually has four parts to it um but that the allowing this addition to continue to be is it six feet from the property line I think. Approximately, yes. approximately six feet from the property line that allowing that won't alter the essential character of the neighborhood or district um, won't substantially or permanently impair the lawful use or development of adjacent property won't reduce access to renewable energy resources and won't be it actually says uh, or which is funny or be detrimental to the public welfare and then that the proposed development is beneficial or necessary for the continued reasonable use of the property. And this is just, you know, the the current porch is the same distance from the property line. This is just continuing that for two additional feet. So my question, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a good answer for it. The uh the waiver analysis versus the uh, like enlargement of a non-conforming structure analysis. Right. Okay, so <laughs> no, I actually had this conversation with Mike earlier today because yeah. we were talking about something else. Um, so a non-conforming structure is one that does not currently comply with the zoning regulations, the existing zoning regulations, but when it was constructed, it could have gotten a permit at that time, right? For for the for the right, or there was no need for a permit when it was built, right? Which right. is this situation. Uh, this situation. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, this is a non-conforming structure uh -huh. right now for the setbacks. However, Joe is here asking for a permit to just continue where it is, right? Uh -huh. If the permit is granted now, because you can, because there's an allowance for a waiver, it will now, the entire thing, be a conforming structure. It just will have gotten a waiver to be a conforming structure. Gotcha. Right? It is, you're granting a waiver so for you, something you're allowed, right. you're allowed to do this. Now, if you have something, and we're, Mike and I are talking about this, there are places where you're not allowed to make it worse right so we've right. had situations where say this was two feet from the property line okay. no you, you can't now get a waiver to continue that it is not an allowable waiver sure. distance because it's that's group, it's group because it's less than five feet right it's less than five feet right um and so in that instance <clears throat> somebody would be asking to to expand that non-conformity, um, which again, you're not allowed to do either. Um, but here, basically, it's a using a waiver to, con to convert a non-conforming structure mm. 
to what will now be a conforming structure with a waiver. Right. Yeah. So we're getting Assuming some, you approve the waiver. Yeah, no, I think I think that rationale makes sense. It's not one or the other. It's the fact that in this case, like that one kind of like leads like leads into the other. There's a there's yeah. a connection between the two analysis. Right. Yeah, I get it. That's why I threw that in here because yeah. I figured it would come up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because something got a waiver to be built does not mean it's now non does not mean it's right. non conforming. Yeah. No, Which sense. is interesting. I mean, you know the the whole concept of, but you of got so, yeah. Right, you got a permit, and now you comply with the regs just with a waiver that was allowed. I mean, it's like we were talking informally or before the meeting, and essentially, you're, you're closer. Yeah, essentially, we're we're uh, providing precedent with, with, on behalf of the new regulations. Yeah. So, okay, so and make as long as we know what we're getting into. <laughs> I mean, this is this is, but it's it's why there's waivers in here, yeah. right? It's well, that's the purpose. And while the waivers are very specific, right? Right. Pretty much when they redid this, pretty much every time there's a waiver, there's a very specific range in which the board is allowed to act with that waiver. Outside of that, you start getting into variance territory, where so far, you know, pretty much you, it's really really hard to go there. Yeah. Okie doke. I'm all good on the that analysis as far as the waiver goes for the setback. I I get it. Um, it, meets, it meets the criteria. It yep. meets the criteria. All right. So part one complete. Um demolition of portion of a historic structure. Meredith. <laughs> it's all you. <laughs> You're doing so well. <laughs> so I'm hoping everybody read the case that they added to the packet. Um, yes. So a lot of the, not a lot of, but but the, the most recent demolition at 14 Liberty Street, the board decided that on more of the economic standard versus the community benefit standard that we have in our, our regulations. Um, when the environmental court heard that appeal on de novo review, which means they put themselves in the place of the board. So they're not critiquing what the board did. They just step in and look at everything fresh and they accept new evidence. Yep. So there was, there was a bunch of new evidence about um, the historic nature of the barn, as well as financial stuff about the property, all, all sorts of new information was put in. The court decided that there was not sufficient evidence to make that economic determination. And instead, um, the court went with the community benefit determination and used language from the city plan as well as language within the regulations themselves to look at what the city had already determined were goals and things that were beneficial to the community as a whole based on policy statements. Um, and so, you know, I think that the, the fact that the court went that way to me indicates that that way. is a good way to go, that there's some examples here as to how to look at facts that are available. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's what I tried to lay out in the staff report. Um, but it's, you know, it's really the the board, it's almost like the board is having to look at this provision again with new eyes yeah. to figure out how it feels about that. Well, it's, do do know that yeah. um, the Historic Preservation Commission, Mike Miller and I are all working on trying to come up with a better demolition provision yeah. that is much clearer um, and has multiple steps into it so that maybe early on if there's a decision made you can just sort of be like nope we don't have to worry about this anymore um but i don't know if it's going to make it for this next go around it's a complicated issue uh, so hopefully this year but it might not be till next year so we gotta you guys gotta help me yeah you gotta work well, well, God. God. I think as to how to be able to then guide applicants as to what needs to be in their application we didn't we look at another application where 
um, the energy efficiency of it was considered part of the public benefit. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's great to have have guidance on this. It's it was always a we didn't know which way to go, and everyone applying for an application like didn't know which provision to go. <laughs> it's you know, it's just it was kind of murky. Um, so maybe this makes it easier already. Um, how does Joe, how does your application and your project benefit the public? <laughs> well, I wrote it in my narrative, actually, and I basically based that around, um, you know, we're improving the structure. Like you said, it's a totally uninsulated space. And if you look at the pictures on the upstairs, that sleeping porch, which is uninsulated, is connected to the bedroom by two double glass doors. Um, so, and that's assuming that most of the house is like what we would conventionally call insulation also. So this new portion and basically the entire side of the rear of the house, um, it's going to be, have modern insulation. The roof area will have modern insulation. Um, right now we can't even really use that bedroom in the winter. We close the door, we turn off the radiator that goes up there. And if someone needs to stay there, we'll warm it, but I'd be heating it all day, every day, you know, if I actually use that room. So, it's just my point of view is it's going to make the house better mm-hmm. in every way. There's no way that it's not making the house better. Um, it'll be more usable year round. It'll be a better space to use. In the case of the mudroom that we use the porch right now, it'll be better to use an insulated mudroom. Um, it'll be easier to access the house right now. You have to go through two double doors in the space of like two of these chairs. And it's pretty tight, especially if you're carrying like a car seat or something like that. Um, we'll have like a real entryway now into the house with like a modern width door and only one of them that's insulated. Um, so that's my whole point really in the narrative is that we're going to make the house better. Sure. And if it's up to the board, whether or not you think that that makes a community better, whether that's substantial, I mean, it's a single family home. It's not like I can feed a thousand people from it. You know, it's, there's, I don't know how much a single family home can really yeah. benefit the community other than just be a better single family right. home. When was the porch built? It looks like it was an original. Add-on. No, it's original. It, we think it's original. Okay. Um, if it wasn't original, it was pretty darn close because we okay. found reference to it. 1927. In, yeah. Something like that. Okay. So it was, it was very... Documentation of it. Yeah. It's exactly the same construction practices and everything as the front porch. The sounds like ceiling, it's, the sounds posts, like it's original but, structure then. But then they just put glass in between tapered posts. So yeah. it's like kind of just set in there. So did like did the design review or the historic preservation commission provide any like guidance or highlights as to like what the defining historic features were of this, you know, of this building? Um, uh yeah, they asked about natures of the design. So like it's a shingle house. So the addition's gonna be shingled. Mm-hmm. Trim's gonna be the same. The windows won't. They'll be modern, you know, insulated double pane windows, triple pane, I'm not even sure, but they'll they won't be exactly the same. But that they also don't want you to copy it exactly. They don't want you yeah. to go get windows from an old house and put it in there and pretend kind of like that it was always part of the house. They want someone walking by to not even notice it, but someone who knows what they're talking about say, that's no, that's obviously different. Um, kind the, of is how I thought of it anyway, how they explained it to me. The anyway. facade and like the frontage of the street still maintains the same architectural yeah. uh, style as the original. That's the other thing. If you go by my house, you might not even notice that this thing's there. I mean, the house itself is completely blocking it. It's set back on one side significantly and on the other side slightly, maybe like two feet. So it's, like I said, the house is really a box with this porch kind of added onto it, um, even if it's all original. But you can't see it from like in front of the house, like like a, from Google Maps. So you have trouble even noticing it in the back there. So my neighbors that will see it every single day, they have absolutely no problem with the project. Um, they're excited about it, I guess you could say. Uh, my other neighbors who can sort of see it, they're, they have no problem with the project. Um, and they're the only one, real ones that matter. The other property that's a budding mine, there's a giant barn. It's like right up against my property line. There can't even be a foot of distance between our property line and this barn, but it's two stories tall. They can't even see my whole house, let alone this porch from their house. Um, You have to be in my yard to see the house. So all in all, I don't think it's a detriment to to the 
community, I don't think I don't think anyone's going to notice unless they notice the construction trucks that's even going on, really. Um, so, so yeah, that's saying it's both architectural style, but also the scale and pedestrian experience is pretty much yeah. unchanged by the project. Yeah, that was another thing the Historic Preservation Commission commented on. We're not like leaving like the front of my house and then building like an eight room mansion off the back. We're just making the existing footprint slightly larger and making the interior space way more usable. So right. it's not really like affecting the character of the house really at all. It'll feel different when you're inside, but it won't uh, look really any different from the outside um, as far as usability goes. So, so uh, say 15 years down the road, 20 years down the road, you sell this house, you've done this great project. Would that owner have more or less work to do in order to like upkeep on the house in this uh, portion? <laughs> uh, my, yes, I would imagine less. So my 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 point being is that they may have less um, more opportunity to put maintenance into the front part of the house and the other remaining yeah. portions of the house. I would say that's a very astute observation. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that is certainly the case. At least hope, right? Huh. Well, that's all I needed. Yeah, I, I I just think that the that in so many instances in Montpelier, as we look at historic preservation, especially when the design review committee has looked at it, yep. and they feel good with it. The historical societies look good; they feel good with it. That the public benefit of added insulation is mm -hmm. awesome. You know, I mean, if it's ticking all those other boxes, yeah, you know, one house at a time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, we have the similar discussion earlier this year it's like there is a public benefit of reducing mm -hmm. energy yeah energy absolutely of, uh, yeah climate mitigation so, yeah. Um, yeah absolutely and i think that properly sealing and insulating and up taking care of a uh, failing portion of the house or to be failing portion of the house protecting the uh, well the good architecture of the other is uh it's right. also a public benefit i would say so and just as a clarification to make sure everybody's aware, the addition is going to be on a foundation. So that's yes. going to also take any like pull off the back of the house. It's all going to be properly supported. Yes. Yeah. In theory. Although it's been there for a hundred years. So I think for a hundred years. Sure it's going anywhere. But... Be good. But <laughs> who knows? You'll see what's going on in there once you take it off. Um, so there were some informal recommendations from design review like i don't see a need to like condition this permit and include those i think that uh you know i, I trust their guidance and the force at which they put behind those if they wanted us to approve those as part of the permit they would is that other people see those the same way oh yeah yeah we're too glad to hear your streamlining process Meredith. hopefully it for the uh, uh, Request a demolition that when you have this kind of advice from the design review committee, that's, um, you know, we have, a, yeah, we can give that credence as opposed yeah. to um, starting from scratch. Well, I mean, we're so design review committee, this, the, 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 the property is in the design review overlay district. So it had to go through yeah. there. Um, the nice thing is, you know, Joe had the option to go before the historic preservation commission as well and was willing to do that. So that was a completely optional. Um, in the future, it might not be optional for applicants, um, depending on the scale of what they're trying to do. Um, people who may, we, we may end up doing something where it's like, well, either hire your own expert or go see our city experts and get an opinion. But we need an expert before it comes to you guys. So you guys have something to, somebody else's opinion to, to consider. Okay, a motion. All righty, motion from Sharon. Motion to approve demolition of a two-story enclosed solarium on the back of 17 Bailey Avenue and to grant a four-foot waiver of the north side setback for construction of a two-story addition on the rear as presented in application number Z2023038 and supporting and supplemental materials. Second. Motion by Sharon, second by Kevin. Uh, Sharon, how do you vote? Yes. Kevin? Yes. 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 Rob votes yes. We have a unanimous approval. All right.
Thank you all very much. I do have three decisions to write before yours because last week was all staff okay. reports. So it's going to be a little bit. So do you feel like you have more empathy for applicants now? Very intimidating <laughs> sitting here. Uh, we sit there together, sweating uh, it out. <laughs> no, actually, you guys all um, made it very easy, honestly. <laughs> so one final, uh, I guess, is approval. Yeah, sure. I'll become a board member again. And I would definitely Welcome like back. to say thank you, Merida, for all your help on this application. Welcome. Big help. This house. Are you looking for a motion to approve the minutes? We are looking for a motion to approve the minutes for April 17th. We'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes for April 17th. Motion by Sharon. Second by Abby. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved for April 17th. That's it, right? Uh, I, yeah. And Rob abstains from that because I wasn't there and whatnot. But Wait, that's fine. Sleep <laughs> actually have to do that. I know. State statute. I know. Um, so the funny thing is, I think when this got condensed down to one page for both DRB and DRC tonight, the next meeting date got removed from um, the, the uh, uh, 15th. Except that we have new applications for you. And because nothing got continued tonight, there is no meeting on the 15th. So oh. your next meeting is actually five weeks away because May has an extra Monday. So you don't meet again until June 5th. Wow. So don't be surprised if you see at least one oh. of these sketch plan subdivisions in for final. I wouldn't be surprised if at least one of them files in time to get in. Um, and then there's also potential, I haven't gotten all the pieces in yet, potential conditional use application. But, um, except we won't see Abby. Yeah, thank you, Abby. Okay. You, get to, you get to just, Go have fun. Just enjoy the summer. <laughs> Gee, while the rest just of gonna, us. Just to tune in and watch every Monday on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's totally okay if you're like, I'm not going to have that on my calendar. Uh, uh, I'm going to go enjoy. Well, I also accept a motion to adjourn if anyone has one. So moved. Second. We have a second and a motion to adjourn. Uh, say aye. Aye. All right. Great. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>